the new player experience in Destiny 2 can be pretty daunting. Even returning players can be left with a lot of confusion about exactly what they should be doing at any given moment. In this video, we're going to demystify the grind as much as possible. It doesn't matter if you've never played before or if you just came back from a long break. This video is going to have you enjoying Destiny's endgame with confidence and taking on the most rewarding activities in the game. The first thing every new player needs to do is choose their starting class. All of them can be amazing, so you don't need to worry about choosing a best class. It's really more about picking the one that appeals to your desired playstyle the most. Don't stress too much about this decision though, because you can have three characters, so this choice is really more about which one you'd like to try first. I'll quickly go through a high level overview of what makes Hunters, Titans, and Warlocks unique, and then we'll dive into their subclasses where the unique playstyles really start to shine. Hunter is easily the most popular class in Destiny, and maybe that's just because they're so easy to identify with. Hunters offer a sneaky, mobile, roguelike class with some of the best looking fashion in the game. It's the easiest class to learn with the lowest barrier to entry. This is thanks in part to their in-air jump, which feels pretty familiar to other games you might have tried in the past. And their dodge roll is also pretty straightforward and very useful. Within 5 minutes of playing a hunter, it'll feel like putting on a comfy old hoodie that you've had for years. Warlock on the other hand is more like learning to play an instrument for the first time. Once you master it, you're going to have some of the most fun gameplay experiences in Destiny, but it does take a while to get there. I mean, their in-air jump doesn't even propel you upwards and is instead more based on your current momentum, which can be pretty confusing for new players to understand. And just wait until you try their blink jump. Oh no. Luckily, their rift ability is much more straightforward and it provides either some healing or some bonus damage. Probably the hardest part of learning to use this thing is just deciding on the best spot to place it. Warlocks are very focused on space magic. If you've never played Destiny before, the closest equivalent from games that you might already know is something like a wizard or a mage class. They make use of the elemental forces of each subclass to perform some really cool and flashy abilities. If Hunters are the easiest to learn and Warlocks are the hardest, well then Titans are right in the middle. They have some great survivability for you to lean on when you're new, especially with their barricade which can be popped up as a temporary wall to protect you. And their jump is a bit more complicated than the Hunter options, but at least it feels pretty intuitive once you get a hang of the boosters. Everyone likes to compare Titans to the traditional tank class, but really that's not too accurate. They're more of a brawler or a warrior with a slight focus on defense. You shouldn't pick it if you're just looking to soak up a ton of damage like a traditional MMO, because if you do so, you're going to be dead pretty fast. You should consider playing Titan though if you love punching things. If you're still not sure which class to start with, that's okay. Don't think that the character you pick today is some permanent decision that you can't change later. A lot of people start on a particular class before falling in love with one of the other ones. I personally started with a Hunter way back in Destiny 1 before I swapped to Titan for a while, and then I found that Hunter was my true calling after all. Luckily, we have 3 slots for characters, so it's easy and almost expected to make one of each of the classes at some point in your playing career. And the weapons and materials are all transferable from character to character, so it's nice to eventually explore all of these options. Taking a closer look at each of the subclasses should show you what you really want to invest in first. Each class currently has 5 subclasses, so you can easily build into them and swap between them at any time. There's Arc, Solar, Void, Stasis, and now Strand. Arc is the electricity subclass revolving around speed, chaining lightning, and disorienting effects. It has two buffs called Amplified and Ionic Traces, and two debuffs which are Blind and Jolt. Amplified is a buff that lets you move faster, slide further, and have increased weapon handling. Ionic Traces are little arc trails that track back to you and grant ability energy anytime you absorb them. Blind is a straightforward debuff that prevents PvE combatants from being able to shoot you until they regain their sight, and in PvP, it makes other players' screens turn bright white for a moment, kind of like a flashbang. Jolt is a debuff that causes an arc explosion affecting both the target as well as any enemies nearby. This electricity chain is fantastic for quickly clearing a bunch of threats. In general, the arc playstyle is very melee focused with some high burst damage super abilities. Arc hunters like to do a little bit of brawling in close quarters. Mostly though, they weave in and out of the front lines while jolting or blinding enemies. They have a really cool loop where you can stack a lot of melee damage while dodging to punch enemies for some huge damage numbers and then get your melee energy back immediately while dodging. Arc Titans on the other hand live almost entirely within the front lines of the enemies that they're slaughtering. Their melee abilities are really strong and do a ton of cleave damage to hit multiple enemies at the same time. Arc Warlocks chain lightning damage to multiple enemies at the same time and their slidey punch animation is pretty cool. Solar subclasses are all about burning, explosions, and healing and are arguably the most impactful for endgame content. They feature healing effects that keep you alive while dishing out some insanely powerful explosions. Solar includes 4 buffs called Cure, Restoration, Radiant, and Fire Sprite and it has 2 debuffs called Scorch and Ignite. Cure is a buff that grants immediate health and shields. 
Restoration is a buff that gives you healing over time that can't be interrupted. You just keep healing even if you're taking damage. Radiant increases your weapon damage for a short amount of time, and Fire Sprites are little solar energy pickups that grant grenade energy when you collect them. Scorch is a damage over time debuff that can stack up to 100 stacks. The more stacks of Scorch you have on an enemy, the more damage you'll deal over time. And at 100 stacks of Scorch, an Ignite is triggered. Ignites are these massive explosions of solar damage that can demolish huge groups of enemies instantly. It's also a great effect for single target damage, dealing more damage than a lot of the other abilities in the game. The Solar Hunter playstyle revolves around traps and gadgets like trip mine grenades and explosive proximity knives. Precision gets rewarded highly on the subclass, whether you're landing those perfect headshots with your weapons or just tossing the perfect trip mine wombo combo grenade. Solar Titans, on the other hand, are kind of the opposite in their playstyle mentality. Instead of slow, meticulous play, they're just looking to hurl some powerful hammers. It's a very brawly playstyle where you don't do much thinking, just a lot of hammer swinging. You toss these flaming hammers of various sizes at enemies while dealing a ton of damage with each swing and healing yourself when you recover your hammer. Solar Warlocks offer an almost entirely grenade-focused playstyle. It's actually really easy to put together a Warlock build with nearly constant uptime on grenades. These nades deal a ton of damage and turn the battlefield into a fiery pit straight out of Armageddon. Void subclasses specialize in debuffing enemies and personal survivability in a few different flavors. It features 4 buffs and 3 debuffs, making it one of the most versatile and reliable options in the game. The 4 buffs are called Devour, Invisibility, Void Overshield, and Void Breach. Devour fully heals you and grants grenade ability energy on final blows. Each final blow also extends the duration timer of this buff, which means you can technically keep it going forever. On-demand healing and infinite grenade ability energy make this buff one of the strongest in the entire game. Invisibility is a buff that makes you invisible to PvE enemies and a little bit harder to see for PvP players. You can even disappear from an enemy player's radar. This is really strong in endgame content where your enemies are the most dangerous. A good Void Hunter player can sneak around to keep your team alive in the harder Grandmaster Nightfalls out there when things get dicey. Void Overshield is a buff that gives you a small amount of extra health so you're a little bit harder to kill. And the last buff is Void Breach, which is newly added in Lightfall. It's a Void Energy pickup that gives you class ability energy when you grab it. Void's three debuffs are called Suppressed, Volatile Rounds, and Weaken. Suppression prevents other players from using their abilities, and it also prevents PvE combatants from firing their weapons. Be careful though, because you can easily suppress yourself with a missed grenade toss. The Volatile Rounds buff creates Void Explosions on final blows with Void weapons. These are great for killing a lot of enemies quickly, and it pairs really well with the Devourer debuff that heals you on kills. The last debuff is called Weaken. A target that's weakened takes extra damage from all sources. Weaken is actually one of the elements that makes Void Hunters really shine. Their playstyle is fantastic for debuffing targets so they take more damage and become less of a threat to your team. They're also able to make themselves and their allies invisible. In the hardest content where you can get killed instantly if you're not careful, this is such a clutch thing to have on your fire team. One of my favorite builds in the game uses the Void Hunter and it's linked on screen if you want to check it out. Void Titans are all about clearing waves of enemies with devastating explosions. Instead of helping the team by making enemies weaker, Titans give allies Void Overshields for survivability. They also have a super ability that's quite strong for team play. Word of Dawn is a protective bubble that keeps everyone safe inside and buffs your damage for a few seconds whenever you touch the bubble. Void Warlocks are mostly solo player focused, and they're perhaps the closest you can get to a mage that you can achieve in Destiny. This playstyle is all about weaving together all of your abilities for high uptime that you're casting a bunch of destructive spells everywhere. There are some survivability options to keep your team alive, but mostly it's for yourself. Stasis is the first of two darkness-based subclasses which can be a lot of fun to play. It's an ice-based class that alters time for some powerful effects and it features two buffs called Crystals and Shards. Stasis Crystals are solidified stasis energy that freeze nearby combatants, and in PvP they slow players down. When they're destroyed, all enemies nearby are damaged by the small blast radius. Stasis Shards are energy pickups that grant melee energy. The three stasis debuffs are Slow, Freeze, and Shatter. Slow makes enemies move and aim slower, and if enough slow stacks are applied to an enemy, they'll freeze. This completely immobilizes the target so they're unable to move, shoot, or perform any abilities for a short period of time. And if enough damage is applied to the frozen target, they'll shatter. This is an explosion of stasis energy that can damage nearby enemies. If you still can't decide which subclass seems to be the most fun after seeing the four old subclasses, well let me introduce you to Strand. This is Destiny's newest subclass that you can fully experience during the Lightfall campaign. Strand has three buffs and three debuffs. The buffs are Woven Mail, Tangle, and Threadlings. Woven Mail reduces all incoming damage in PvE, but only body shot damage for PvP. Tangles are small orbs of Strand that can be shot or thrown to create explosions. One of my favorite things to do since Lightfall was released is to make these tangles, pick them up, and then toss them across the map and use my grapple to hook onto them. 
A lot of people don't realize you can do this, but it's super fun. It's one of the fastest ways to move around the map. Strand's final buff is called Threadlings. These are Strand minions that hunt out nearby enemies and explode to deal damage. Strand's three debuffs are called Suspend, Unravel, and Sever. Suspend lifts PvE combatants into the air where they can't move or shoot. They're simply trapped in a web of Strand energy. In PvP, enemy players are still lifted up and trapped for a moment, but they can still shoot their weapons, but only from the hip. Unravel is a debuff to a target. When they take additional damage, they'll create unraveled projectiles that seek out and damage nearby targets. Strand's final debuff is called Sever. Enemies that are affected by this deal less outgoing damage to you and your allies. Now that you've learned a little bit about each of the subclasses, it's time to pick a class and get started. And remember, you can always change the sub later. As a brand new player, you won't have every subclass unlocked at the start, but as you progress through the new player quest and beat the campaigns for each expansion, you'll eventually have every option available to pick from. Before we start dominating enemies all over the universe with our space magic abilities, we need to first understand how to navigate the menus because even that isn't exactly straightforward for new Destiny players. Since there are a lot of systems in the game, there's also a lot of menus to explore. Your starting place when you're deciding what to do in the game is called being in orbit, and from here you can choose what to do next. Your first step in the progression as a new or a returning player is to start with the new Guardian rank system. You can find these Guardian ranks by clicking on the View Journey option when you're in orbit. These ranks were specifically designed for new players to give you a step-by-step -step list of things to do to get more comfortable with the game. They start off pretty simple by telling you to go complete a simple quest, but eventually they'll get much more difficult. After a while, you'll get to the point where the game thinks that you're a veteran player, but there's still a fairly large pitfall here where a lot of newer players get stuck. That's why following the next steps on leveling, how to build and progress your character, and how to get the best gear in the game are so important. Returning back to our orbit screen, we also have the option to open the director. If you pick this option, it will show you all the destinations that you can explore. These are divided up into planets with particular landing zones where you can explore each map. You can also find some social spaces like the tower where you can interact with particular vendors and progress the main storylines, and of course have some dance parties with fellow guardians. There are also nodes that allow you to do some activities that aren't specifically tied to any particular planet. The Vanguard playlist allows you to match with other guardians in three player activities called Strikes and Battlegrounds. Eventually you'll defeat a large boss and get some nice rewards. Gambit features a player versus player versus environment activity where you can team up with three other guardians to kill enemies, bank moats, and defeat a boss before the other team of four players defeats their boss. You have to be on edge though because players can invade the other team's world and kill you to slow down your progress. The Crucible playlist features player versus player activities like your typical deathmatch modes in other FPS games. Each node has a particular game mode and there are some special events here like Trials of Osiris and Iron Banner that also show up in this menu. Across the top bar, you can scroll to the left and right to explore the other menus. On the left side, the quest tab will show your active quests and bounties. By the way, you can select particular ones that you want to track progress on and the game will help you figure out what to do next to complete them. There's a season pass that allows you to unlock rewards as you level up each season, and of course there's a store where you can give Bungie all of your money by purchasing cosmetic items. On the right side of the menus, you'll find a social tab where you can interact with your friends and clanmates, and you can see other players who are participating in the same activities as you. You can also accept invites to play with people or add new friends down here. If that wasn't enough menus for you, you're in luck because we have a completely different set of menus all about your character. Your character screen is where you're going to be spending a lot of time organizing your gear and choosing your subclass and abilities. If you scroll down, you'll also find an additional menu where you can choose emotes, tweak the appearance of your guardian, and decide which sparrow or ship options look the best with your style. From the character screen, you can also click over to the left to bring up your loadouts, which help you quickly swap between gear when you have some builds going, and to the right side you can also see an overview of all the mods that your character has equipped. Now back up to the top part of the menu, you can also explore the options to the left and the right side of the character screen. To the right side, your inventory tab shows most of the things you can collect while playing the game, including consumable items and engrams which you can decrypt at the tower or the helm social spaces. You can also see a tally of the most important materials you can collect in Destiny, which we'll cover in a bit. On the left side of this menu, you can find the Journey tab, which we've already covered a little bit. Beyond the Guardian rank system, you can also see which triumphs you've completed, and which titles you might want to hunt down for the future. These are equipable in-game as a little bit of extra flair that other Guardians can see. The Collection screen helps you keep track of all the items you've received in the game, and track progress on the weapons you can craft. You can also use the screen to reacquire some items like exotic weapons and armor pieces that you've already collected in case you accidentally deleted them. And the clan tab helps you manage your clan and see progress towards any clan loot. With an understanding of how to navigate all of these menus, it's now time to start taking on some activities and making your character more powerful. Destiny's leveling is simple to understand once you know the system, but it looks really complicated at first. 
Your power level is the number on the top right of your screen when you're looking at your character's inventory. This number shows your gear score plus any bonus levels given from your seasonal artifact. These bonus artifact levels come only from earning XP. You get more XP by playing the game and completing bounties from vendors. This extra power coming from the XP gets reset every new season. It's also completely independent of the gear that you're wearing. Your gear score is just the average of your equipped items. If all of your weapons and armor are at 1800 power, then your gear score is 1800. Progress in leveling up your gear is limited based on which activities you're doing that drop that particular piece of gear. Every player starts with gear at 1600 and your next goal is to reach what's known as the soft cap. During this phase of leveling, anything that you do and any loot that you get will drop higher than what you already have. During the first and second seasons of Lightfall, this soft cap is between 1600 and 1750 power level. Once you reach 1750 power, you'll move into the powerful cap range. This is currently set to 1800 ever since the launch of Lightfall, and this may increase again in future seasons and expansions depending on when you're watching the video. At this point in your leveling journey, the only way to progress your power level is by completing activities that give you either powerful or pinnacle rewards. You can easily see what kind of loot will be rewarded by just hovering over the activity. These rewards work on a weekly lockout, so if you earn the powerful or pinnacle drop, you can't get it again on that same character until the next Tuesday at reset time. You can also see which sources of powerful and pinnacle rewards are still obtainable for the week by looking at these little yellow indicators next to an activity. You'll want to do your powerfuls first before you do any pinnacles. Pinnacles give you the biggest jumps in power level, but there's only a few sources of them each week. It's really important as you're leveling to keep an eye on your highest gear score item in each slot because the lowest of these is the thing that's going to restrict you from reaching an overall higher power level. For example, if everything's at 1805 but your boots are only 1795, those are bringing down your average so far that it's worth specifically trying to get boots before you collect any more powerful or pinnacle rewards. After you reach the end of the powerful cap, you'll need to start collecting pinnacle rewards in order to reach the pinnacle cap. As of the making of this video, the pinnacle cap is still 1810, but this number will likely increase in the future. There's a lot of specific strategies you can utilize to level much faster than the average new player, and in the previous beginner's guide I made, I went into extreme detail on how you can expedite this process with just a little bit of extra effort. It's the process that I use that allows me to hit the pinnacle cap within just a couple weeks of a new expansion dropping instead of waiting several weeks. I'll link that video in the description for you, and the advanced leveling parts start at about 1050 into the video. For now though, here's a simplified version that will get you off on the right foot. You can speed up this entire leveling process quite a bit once you get a Hunter, Titan, and Warlock going. Your goal is to reach your soft cap on one character, and then finish all of your powerful and pinnacle rewards on that same character. Once you've finished all of your powerful and pinnacle rewards, you then transfer your highest power level weapons over to your next character. It's important to note here that you don't actually have to transfer these items to the new character. Destiny has a smart loot system that automatically determines the highest level that you could be if you wore all of your highest gear, and it uses this number to determine your next reward. This takes into account any items near your other characters and also stuff that's stashed in your vault. Since your weapons can be used on your second character, they will bring up your average gear score quite a bit. This puts you at a higher starting point than your first character. With this higher starting point, you again reach the soft cap before completing any of your powerfuls and pinnacles on your second character. By the time you've finished all of these rewards for the week, your second character's power level should be quite a bit higher than when you first started at. After your second character is done, you then repeat the process all over again for your third character. You move your higher power level weapons over to your last character, reach the soft cap, and then do all of your powerful and pinnacle rewards again. At this point, your last character is probably quite a bit closer to reaching the pinnacle cap. And once you've reached that pinnacle cap on one character, it's much easier to get your other two there as well. It might sound daunting at first, but it's a pretty simple process that you'll do every single time the level cap gets increased. And again, if you want to learn the more advanced strategy that I mentioned, be sure to check out my other video that goes into much more detail on how to do this as efficiently as possible. By the way, there's a core system in Destiny that's really important to understand during this leveling process. Infusion allows us to take a power level of one item and copy it to an item that you like more. For example, let's say that you finally got an exotic chest piece that makes your character really fun to play. But then you get a few new armor pieces to drop as you're leveling, and now your exotic chest piece is dragging your overall level down quite a bit. But luckily, you can infuse the power of one of your new chest pieces into your old exotic chest piece. You'll sacrifice your old item to level up the item that you want to raise up. The catch is that this process only works on legendary and exotic items, and it only works for items that occupy the same slot on your character, and it requires some materials to perform this action. Plus, you can only infuse armor pieces that can actually be worn by that type of character, so no infusing warlock boots into your hunter's exotic stompies. As a newer player, you probably don't have a lot of these important materials stockpiled yet, so I'd highly recommend before you go crazy infusing up every item, you should really wait until you know what you're doing and what's valuable to keep. That brings us to a big topic of discussion. We need to talk about Destiny's currencies. 
These play a pivotal role in leveling up your characters and progressing your builds and gear. There are a lot of currencies in this game, and I'll try to keep it as simple as possible to give you only the information that you really need to get started. The first currency is Glimmer, which is basically Destiny's version of gold. It's the most basic currency that you get from turning in bounties, completing activities, killing enemies, and much more. You can only hold on to 250,000 Glimmer at the same time, so feel free to spend it progressing your character whenever you're full. But do keep in mind that some things start to cost a lot of Glimmer, so don't let your reserves get too low or you might get stuck while building it back up. If you do run out though, you can go acquire more at the Tower of Crypt Art. Legendary Shards are as foundational to Destiny as Glimmer. Bungie's getting rid of Legendary Shards when the final shape expansion drops, but they're still valuable for now, so we decided to keep this section in the video. You get these mostly from dismantling legendary or exotic items. You'll be constantly getting loot that you can destroy in exchange for legendary shards. It shouldn't be a problem for you to start saving these up, and I do want to caution you because it's very easy to go broke here. You really only want to use these once you start to get pretty rich. Upgrade modules are used for infusing weapons and armor. These can be purchased directly from the gunsmith or Ada 1 in the tower. And you can get them from the season pass as well as doing the lifehall campaign. If you upgrade your gear while you're too early in the leveling process though, you'll be getting much higher power level gear so quickly that you're going to be infusing things constantly. Pretty quickly, you're going to run out of these upgrade modules and you'll need to grind for more to upgrade your gear, which is not a fun place to be stuck. Enhancement cores are another material that you should really be pretty conservative while spending early on in your journey. You can buy these from the Crypt Dark in the tower or earn them from a few different ways in the game. Keep an eye on ghost mods that can actually help you earn these a little bit faster. My favorite way to farm these cores is just playing PvP and going for headshot kills. These will have a chance to give you enhancement cores if you use a particular mod on your ghost. Enhancement cores are primarily used to level up your weapons and armor, which will slightly boost your sets and allow you to slot more armor mods. We'll talk about those in a second. To fully level up your armor, you need two specific currencies that are much harder to get. You'll need enhancement prisms and ascendant shards. These are some of the more difficult currencies to gather in the game, and they mostly come from endgame content. Ascendant shards are primarily found from completing the highest difficulty activities in the game, like raids and nightfalls. PvP players can also get them from going flawless in the Trials of Osiris, and you can also get a few for free in the Season Pass. The last half of each season is the best time to farm for these. In the meantime, you want to hold off on using these as much as you can and save up for some really good gear. Keep in mind that upgrading an exotic piece of armor requires three of these shards. And you can buy them in the tower along with enhancement prisms, but they do get pretty expensive. Don't worry though, I'll explain now what makes a good item and how to get the best ones in the game. Weapons and armor in Destiny have a rarity system that roughly defines how good the item is. These items start from white common drops to green, blue, purple, and gold. For the majority of the game though, only the purple legendaries and gold exotics are really meaningful. For weapons, most exotics aside from a few oddballs feature a static roll. So once you find your first sunshot, you'll never find another one that has a different set of perks. However, Hawkmoon and Deadman's Tail do feature random rolls, and there are a few exotics that are craftable, which means you can build them however you'd like. Legendaries are almost the exact opposite in this capacity. Nearly every legendary weapon features a plethora of perks that can potentially come with the weapon, and it's your job as the player to determine which of these perk combinations you like best and farm for those exact combinations. Truthfully, this makes up an enormous part of the Destiny endgame. It's a looter shooter after all. You can only equip one exotic weapon and piece of armor at a time, so your exotic and legendary weapons should work together in your build to be as synergistic as possible. Farming for perfectly rolled legendary weapons is the primary reason that most players play Destiny so religiously. In both PvE and PvP, particular combinations of perks can make the game so much easier and more fun to play. At the time of this video, there are 17 different types of weapons in Destiny and more than 600 different weapons to choose from. That's a lot of choice as a new player, so here's a quick overview of what to prioritize. The metas in Destiny change often based on patches from the developer Bungie. They like to rotate which weapons are the strongest to keep the game feeling fresh. So right now as I'm making the video, SMGs might be a top choice, but by the time you watch this video, the meta may have changed entirely. Each type of weapon in Destiny has various benefits and are most commonly divided up by their effective ranges. Primary weapons consume ammo that's infinite, so you can shoot all day long and never run out. These weapons are typically used against minor red bar enemies in PvE, and deal significantly less damage to yellow bar enemies and bosses compared to the special and heavy weapons. For primary weapons, you have shorter ranged options like the SMGs and sidearms, mid ranged options like auto rifles, hand cannons, and pulse rifles, and longer ranged bows and scout rifles. They're all popular in various scenarios, and understanding the particular strengths of a weapon category can help you decide where you should start. Special weapons consume green special ammo bricks that you'll find on the ground, and are much more effective against tankier enemies like yellow bars and champions. Shotguns and glaives cover your closer ranges, fusion rifles, trace rifles, and single shot grenade launchers cover more the medium ranges, and snipers cover long ranges. 
Grenade launchers also have the benefit of being able to defeat multiple enemies at a time pretty reliably, especially in their waveframe form. This makes them especially good in PvE, but it's worth exploring each of the options because they can all work well depending on how you like to play the game. Your power weapons consume purple heavy ammo, and they're usually saved for dealing some serious damage whether that's to a boss you're fighting or a yellow bar that's presenting a big threat and needs to die right now before he wipes your whole team. Swords cover your extreme close ranges, grenade launchers and machine guns cover more medium range, and heavy snipers and linear fusion rifles cover your longer ranges. Finding the perfect role on legendary weapons can be frustrating, especially for weapons that rarely drop in the first place or have extremely dense perk pools with way too many options. The chances of you actually getting your god role in these scenarios can feel pretty slim. Fortunately, we also have many weapons that can be craftable with any perks that you desire in their perk pool. Weapon crafting lets you make your very own god role without the uncertainty of RNG. To see which weapons are craftable, you can go over to your patterns tab in your character menu. A pattern is a blueprint that lets you craft a weapon. To unlock the craftable weapon pattern, you need to obtain red border versions of these particular weapons called deep sights. These deep sight weapons are randomly rolled versions of the weapon with a distinct red border around them. When you get one, you can inspect the weapon and then extract that knowledge on how to craft it. Patterns require between 2 and 5 deep sight versions to extract before you can craft them. Your pattern screen will show you how many more you need before you can start crafting your own roll on that weapon. Once you do finally craft it, you'll also need to level it up in order to unlock all of the available perks that can be reforged. We now have the ability to level up crafted weapons by spending some materials. This is great for veteran players with a lot of materials stockpiled up, but as a newer player the costs are pretty steep so I generally would recommend just leveling up the manual way. Just like weapons, most of the meaningful armor you acquire in the game will be either exotic or legendary. Exotic armor has incredibly powerful, gameplay defining effects that can usually sync really well with particular subclasses. There are gloves that buff up hunter tripmine grenades and throwing knives, helmets that let you blink jump more effectively, and boots that chain lightning across the ground on melee hits. Unlike weapons, armor doesn't come with randomly rolled perks though, and the only real difference between legendary and exotic armor are those exotic traits. Both kinds of armor can be leveled up to 10 total energy, which gives you plus 2 bonus stats in each stat category, and also allows you to slot more mods, which we'll cover in a minute. Armor also comes with a preset distribution of these stats that benefit your character in various ways. As a general rule of thumb, any armor that totals 60 stat points or above is worth keeping as a newer player. Once you have a decent collection going, anything that's 55 or less should probably be dismantled unless you really need it for infusing other gear to its power level. Each of these stats do something important, and it's up to you as a player to determine what's the most important for your build and your playstyle. Mobility increases your strafing movement speed and the height of your single jump. It also helps your dodge class ability come back faster on a hunter. Resilience gives you slightly more hit points in PvP and provides damage resistance in PvE. It also mitigates a bit of incoming flinch and makes your barricade class ability come back faster on a titan. Recovery controls how quickly your health begins to regenerate whenever you're damaged, and it also makes your rifts come back faster on a warlock. Discipline makes your grenades come back faster, intellect makes your super regenerate faster, and strength makes your melee ability come back faster. It's important to note that these stat categories only benefit you once you've reached a threshold of some multiple of 10. So if you have 82 mobility, you're really only getting the benefit of 80 points and two of those are being wasted. There's also a special type of legendary armor called Artifice Armor that's acquired only from endgame dungeon activities. The special armor gives you plus 3 additional stat points you can apply to any slot which is really helpful for build crafting to get the exact distribution of stats that you desire. Not only does your armor affect your stat points, but it's also one of the most important ways to build out your character. This used to be really complicated and borderline impossible for new players to enjoy, but fortunately it's been completely redone in Lightfall and simplified quite a bit. As you complete your guardian ranks, you'll unlock mods that you can slot into your armor. Some mods are pretty straightforward and provide very simple bonuses. These are white in color and do things like providing bonus stats, improving your reload speed on particular elements of weapons, and giving you more aim assist. Other mods are a bit more complicated and interact with a system called Armor Charge. Each of these mods fall into one of three categories and are color-coded to help you quickly understand how they function. Green mods boost your armor charge generation. For example, you can carry more armor charge stacks or give some stacks to allies. Blue mods cause your armor charge stacks to decay over time in exchange for some benefit. For example, you can gain a temporary bonus to an armor stat or increase weapon damage. Yellow mods immediately consume your armor charge stacks in exchange for some sort of an effect in response to a specific condition. For example, you can gain a temporary damage reduction whenever your shield breaks, or generate special ammo for you and your allies when you use your finisher. If you don't have a mod equipped that consumes armor charge, you won't collect or generate armor charge for yourself. There are endless builds out there that you can explore in Destiny once you start collecting all these mods and exotic armor pieces. 
It's one of the best parts of the game and worth exploring in detail as you become more experienced as a player. So now you have an understanding of how armor mods work and maybe even have an idea of a particular build that you might want to try someday, but where do you actually go to farm for those specific pieces of exotic armor that you need to make that build? Well, there's a few ways to farm for exotic armor pieces in Destiny. Beyond simply acquiring the exotic armor in the first place, you also want a desirable stat distribution and farming this armor will allow you to get better stat rolls. The most reliable way to farm for exotic armor are these mini dungeons called Lost Sectors. These are short solo pieces of content that can be found on each planet by locating the symbol that looks like this. Once you clear the regular difficulty of the Lost Sector, it will be available on a harder difficulty on certain days. You can tell if a Lost Sector is selected as the daily, more difficult Lost Sector whenever it has this symbol. You can also use websites like todayindestiny.com to easily figure out which Lost Sectors are the featured one for the day. These more difficult versions usually take less than 10 minutes to clear once you have a good loadout, and some of the fastest players out there complete them in even less than 3 minutes. Once you get good at them, they can be a really fun and fast way to get some nice gear. When you clear Lost Sector on Legend or Master difficulty, you have a chance of getting an exotic armor piece to drop. The exotics available change every day. One day you'll have boots dropping, and then another day chests will drop, and then gloves and then helmets. Lost Sectors are also giving you the materials that you need to progress your character. When it feels like you're getting a little bit unlucky and not getting that particular exotic to drop, just remember how many materials you're collecting. In order for most of the newer exotic armor pieces to drop in other activities, you're going to need to first unlock them in a Lost Sector. I think it's time for a bunch of random fire tips that can really help you out on your journey. Some enemies have shields with an elemental type. If you use a kinetic or non-matching elemental weapon, it's a little bit slower to break them. If you use a weapon that matches their shield type though, it'll break right away. In harder content, these can be a huge game changer, so you really want to prepare ahead of time with the shields that you're going to face. If you miss picking up an item that drops in the game world, that item will be automatically sent to the Postmaster at the tower. He'll hold on to anything that you miss indefinitely, but be careful because there's limited storage space and he'll get rid of older things once you've filled up his capacity. Also in the tower, you'll find a vault where you can store extra items that you want to keep for later. This has 600 slots and it might seem like a lot for now, but soon you'll have it all filled up. Right next to the vault in the tower, there's a little kiosk where you can buy powerful items that you might have missed from older content. Some of these are really powerful and worth buying once you have the time to grind for them. Ikora Ray in the tower sells upgrades for your subclasses. You can buy new grenades, aspects, and fragments that can provide some awesome new build making potential. It's worth buying everything she has for sale as soon as you can afford it. By the way, as you progress your character, stasis upgrades are available at the Exo Stranger over on Europa. When you have the materials you need to upgrade your character, strand upgrades are available at this little pond here on this part of Nia Muna. Public events are timed world events that occur in the game world all over the map as you explore. You'll know a public event is about to occur whenever you see this icon, which also tells you how soon it's going to take place. Each event also has a condition where you can turn it into a heroic public event by performing certain requirements. These heroic versions have a harder boss and will drop better loot and more XP. By the way, many newer players are tricked into thinking that these are randomly heroic events, and that's definitely not the case. Every single one has a particular condition you can do that will make it heroic. Neomuna also has special public events with an increased timer and much harder difficulty. These are nearly impossible to complete solo, but they reward guaranteed exotics on completion. There are three different types of champions, which are enemies that have a particular mechanic that you need to perform in order to defeat them. These are barrier champions, which raise up a barrier and heal themselves back to full health unless you break that barrier, overload champions, which rapidly heal unless you stagger them, and unstoppable champions, which will charge you and take significantly less damage until you stun them. Each champion is countered by specific things, and here's a quick cheat sheet. Barrier champions can have their shield broken when you're under the solar subclass buff called Radiant, from the void subclass debuff called Volatile Rounds, or from Strands on Raveling Rounds. Overload champions can be staggered with an arc subclass debuff called Jolt, with a Void subclass debuff called Suppression, and with a Stasis subclass debuff called Slow. For Unstoppable Champions, you can stun them with Arc's Blinding debuff, Solar's Ignition debuff, the Shatter debuff from Stasis, and the Suspend debuff from Strand. Keep in mind that every season, the artifact changes along with which weapon types can counter the champions. They also sometimes add abilities that can counter these champions to the seasonal artifact. Several exotic weapons also feature champion busting effects. For example, Arbalist can break shield champions without requiring any special unlocks from the artifact. Every weekend, there's a special vendor who shows up somewhere in the Destiny universe called Xur. He sells exotic weapons and armor along with some legendary options. You can also buy a random exotic if you have enough legendary shards saved up, and he has a special quest you can do every week to buy another exotic item. As a new player, this is one of the easiest ways to acquire exotic items, and it's worth seeing what he has for sale. 
My friend Fallout plays does a great short video every Friday telling you where he's located for the weekend and if the things he's selling are worth your time. There are a ton of incredibly useful third-party websites created by Destiny community members that are almost impossible to live without once you get used to them. Here's a short list of some of my favorites. Destiny Item Manager, or DIM for short, allows you to interact with your inventory in so many amazing ways. You can search for particular items, move them between characters, optimize your builds, check out what vendors are selling, check your highest slots on each character, and so much more. It's the best tool for Destiny players, hands down. Light.gg provides a massive database of every item available in the game. It's a great way to look up weapons to see what perks they can roll with. On a similar note, d2foundry.gg allows you to pick any weapon and build your own version to see how your theoretical god roll would impact your stats on the weapon. D2 Armor Picker is a great resource for optimizing stats in your build across all of your armor. Dim does a similar thing, but I've always liked how D2 Armor Picker's UI works for the job a little bit better. Blueberries.gg offers a ton of great guides for new players covering weapons, leveling, and activities. And we also have an amazing community Discord server with over 15,000 members who are looking for new players to play with all the time and can help you answer any questions that you might have. You can join us for free at discord.gg slash pattycakes. If you're playing Destiny on PC and using a mouse and keyboard, you might also really enjoy trying a mouse pad from the new company I started this year called Ember Edge. Many of the top Destiny players out there are using these pads and loving them, and the feedback we've received from customers has been amazing. You can check them out at emberedge.com. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet, and up next, I'd recommend checking out my video covering fun exotic combos that you really need to try in Destiny 2. It's the video linked on screen and in the description.